My name is Jonathan McGrath um, and the concept I'm looking at is identity and how popular culture can influence identity. Now there are parts of our identity that we can't control, but there are also parts that are based on our decisions, our interests, and how we interpret the world around us. So the main theory behind studying pop culture is that it's not something we just see and not pay attention to. It's something we actively seek out and engage with. We do something with it. We relate to it. We identify with it. Professor Stacey Tarkic put it as, identity is something we do, not something we are. However, like I said, there are some parts of our identity that we can't control. Things like nationality, ethnicity, sex. And while these factors shape who we are and who we surround ourselves with, it's also the acts of social definition we can control. The decisions we make, how we react to things, what meanings we make. We make sense of the world by creating these groups and systems within ourselves that we individually identify with. We're able to interpret these things and say, yes, I understand that, I know that, and I know how I fit into that. We relate to it. Cultural studies looks at affiliation and disaffiliation, which means that there are things we are more likely to identify with than others. Media scholar John Fisk stated that the sense of oppositionality, the sense of difference, is often more determinant than that of similarity. What Fisk means by this is that our identity is shaped more by what we don't relate to than what we do. In essence, you have interests and ideas and you surround yourself with people who have similar interests and ideas, people who have adopted similar meanings to you. By saying what you like and what you don't, what you stand for and what you don't, you create your identity. And of course, that's something that's fluid, it changes. When we look at exactly how we identify with pop culture, we look at the material itself. Some characters come across as two-dimensional stereotypes, which is dangerous when we're looking at identity, as there are often negative outcomes from stereotypes. It's more so the multi-dimensional characters with identifiable traits and personalities that we're more likely to relate to. Not just relating to a character because you're female and they're female, but because of that character's morals and thoughts. That's where some pop culture can enter dangerous waters. If the character is merely a representative of a group or a type, which happens to be the same as yours, are you going to identify with them? For a young, impressionable child to be exposed to these type of characters, it's important to note whether they identify more with the representation or the more complex structure of that character. Say a young girl identifying with a female character from a TV show purely because they're female, as opposed to a young girl identifying with a female character who's a scientist because that girl really likes science. To help clarify these ideas of identity, an example from pop culture we can use is a video game The Sims. So The Sims is a live simulation game where the user gets the freedom to create a character or multiple characters. The players build and customise a house and live out their characters' lives, dictating every move and mundane task until that character eventually dies, or you put them in a pool and remove the ladder. The point is, the user creates the identity of their character. Sex, race, height, weight, hair colour and more is all customizable, as well as personality and decisions made during gameplay, like careers and hobbies. When playing the game, the player may choose to create a character exactly like them. This makes the player think about their own identity, their own appearance and personality. The game itself can also shape our identities. A study was done at Stanford University, which found that people often act out their personal fantasies in virtual avatar games such as The Sims. In a risk-free environment where, if you don't like it, you can start again, this can vastly influence someone's behaviour in real life. The study also found that players would have tall, attractive characters act more confidently in their virtual world, and less attractive characters would be less confident, which may reflect our societal values. The point is, if players adopt their perception of how the world works into the video game, then it's clear that the environments and identities that come from the game can be lived out for real. A game like The Sims enables a player to live through the lives of an avatar, dictating the appearance, decisions, and relationships. The game is used to express the individual player's perception of real life, as well as communicate our sense of identity in a stress-free, cut-and-pasteable world. So pop culture can shape our identity by determining what we like and what we don't like. We see ourselves in different characters and live out our own lives through pop culture. Stereotypes and social norms may pigeonhole us into very basic identities. However, our social definition, how we decide to be seen by society, plays the ultimate part in our identity. Thanks.